today we're talking all about population. For the past couple of decades, when talking about population, the concern has always been with overpopulation. The world is quickly approaching 10 billion people. And the question is, can the world with its finite resources support that many humans all at once? Also, the speed in which the human population has grown recently has been very alarming. But just like we've learned from the stock market in 2022, things that skyrocket up tend to plummet back down to earth. And that's exactly what's happening right now with global population growth. So it peaked sometime around 1968, and ever since then it's been sharply declining, and it's projected to continue the sharp decline well into the future. And here's a better look at the annual population growth of the entire world. We can see that we have come off of our peak, and by the year 2080, 2090, we're going to be actively losing people. In fact, I've seen some projections that predict ultimately someday far in the future, the human population will stabilize at around 3 billion people. And this of course has the potential to cause massive problems in our society and our economy. And that's why we have some people like Elon Musk beginning to sound the alarm bells on this looming population collapse. So I went ahead, did some research, collected some data, and we're gonna see just how big of a problem this really is. So my research began with this map right here. This shows when each country's population peaked. So all of Western Europe, Russia, Japan, have already seen their population peak come and go. Then we have places like Germany, China, South Korea, that are going to have their peak sometime this decade. But then some other spots like Australia, all of Africa, Scandinavia, and North America have their population peak well into the future. So it's important to know that this population collapse isn't going to happen everywhere at the same time. And to get more data on this, this map shows the fertility rate by country. And as you would expect, it does closely follow the population peak. So Eastern Europe has some of the lowest fertility rates along with Japan and South Korea. And speaking of South Korea, we can use them as the example in this video because they currently have the lowest fertility rate in the world at 0.81. Just for context, the replacement rate to maintain a stable population is 2.1. So yeah, a fertility rate of less than one is really bad news for Korea. And that's why their population is expected to half by the end of this century. And this is the almost current population pyramid of South Korea. They have a population of just over 51 million people, and this is projected to be their absolute peak. From this point on, it is only downhill. And by looking at the population pyramid, you can completely see why this is the case. There are far fewer young people than there are older people. For context, this is what a healthy population pyramid looks like. It's supposed to be in the shape of a pyramid. A population pyramid like this is at least sustainable, so there's a consistent amount of new people being born to replace the older generations. But then you get to South Korea and we see basically an inverted pyramid. So there's less and less young people being born and the population is aging. And if we skip ahead to the year 2100, this is the projection. So the population went from 51 million to 24 million and the population is just continuing to be squeezed, getting ever older. Now, as you would imagine, this has some serious direct economic consequences for the future of South Korea and ultimately the rest of the world. The most obvious consequence is a smaller working age population. So you have less and less young people working and being productive in the economy. And ultimately the ratio of working age to retired people becomes extremely skewed. So this would mean that programs like social security are no longer going to be possible. But the big question that we do not have the answer to yet is what's gonna to happen to the GDP of South Korea as the population begins to fall. So, so far as the population has grown, there's been more and more young people in the workforce, the GDP has grown. And if we combine them both onto the same graph, it'll look something like this. The population and GDP so far has grown. But from this point on, we know the population is only going to be decreasing. So does this mean that the economy of South Korea is going to stagnate? Can it still grow or is it actually going to contract? The worst case scenario, of course, is a falling GDP. This would indicate that the country is dying, the living standards are falling, 
and it's just not a good situation. But I have to say, I think this is unlikely. Even though with a shrinking population, we have less and less people actively contributing to the economy, compared to hundreds of years ago, people are simply more productive today. This is a chart of GDP per capita from 1820 to 2018. It's adjusted for things like inflation, and we can see a massive rise in the average wealth of an individual over this time period. And this growth in GDP is really the ultimate measure. So even though in the future we're going to have less people than we have today, each one of these people is going to be more valuable, more productive, and have a much higher quality of life than people in the past. So as long as technology continues to progress, productivity increases, the economy might slow down, but still going to be growing in my opinion. But keep in mind, that is just my perception of the data. And it's very possible that these low birth rate countries will eventually go extinct. So feel free to leave your thoughts in the comments below. If you enjoyed, leave a like, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next one.